Welcome everyone to um, Precision Nanosystems Tea Time webinar series. Um, thank you so much for joining today. Um, and thank you to Dr. Heinrich Haas uh, for being our presenter today. Dr. Haas is the Vice President um, of the RNA, RNA Formulation and Drug Delivery uh, Group at BioNTech. Um, and Dr. Haas today will be talking about uh, polysarcosine uh, functionalized lipid nanoparticles for therapeutic uh, mRNA delivery. Um, just as an introduction to your Precision Nanosystems team, um, you have support from myself and Richard, who are based um, in the UK, um, along with Suha, who's one of our newest members to the team. Um, and then you have Sarah, who's our food application scientist based in France, and then you also have support from Jürgen and Martin, who are based in Germany. So if you have any questions for us either today on the presentation or any of our technologies, please do feel free to reach out to us. But other than that, I'll hand it over to Dr. Haas. Thank you very much. Thank you, AJ, for this kind introduction. Uh, and thank you to, uh, also to PNA overall to give me the opportunity to share some of our results with uh, the, the nanoparticle community. Um, actually, uh, we are in contact with, with each other already quite a long time uh, early on when, when uh, PNI was founded, when we started uh, exchanging uh, information and testing systems. And um, uh, ever since, we have been actively working with uh, PNI technology, but also with, with others. And um, here, uh, I would give an, an, an introduction into some research uh, we have been done on the development of um, nanoparticle systems uh, in general to get a bit of better control and to improve certain characteristics which may be uh, problematic for future key developments. Yeah, so polysarcosine functionalized uh, uh, lipid nanoparticles. Uh, I'll show you in a minute what this is about, and this is part of a PhD thesis uh, of a student for, uh, from our uh, group, uh, Sala Nogueira. So um, I organized the, the presentation uh, in the way as you see. I'll talk very briefly about lipid based RNA delivery systems. More probably, you are all familiar with them. Uh, I will introduce to you the, the polysarcosine lipids as, as a, a novel variety for, for particle engineering. I'll share with you some data on, on, on structure analysis and uh, in vitro activity of such systems um, uh, at, at different levels. And uh, in the end, uh, I will conclude some of our, our observations we have uh, been able to draw with, from the study. So um, RNA is therapeutic molecules. You all know uh, that RNAs, messenger RNAs, are able to, to translate into peptides, which you can make use of for various types of therapeutic intervention. Here you see the, um, um, the uh, architecture of an RNA, which is being used for, um, for cancer immunotherapy with the classical uh, structural elements like the capping structure, the 5 prime UTR, the, the uh, 3 uh, prime UTR, the poly A tile, and in that case in um, MITD segments, and here you see the open reading frame with the coding uh, sequences. So the aim is to, to bring this uh, RNA into a, a, a nanoparticle by comb combining with a vehicle uh, in order to uh, end up in an injectable or, or in, in a product which can be applied to patients mostly by, by uh, intravenous injection or intramuscular injection. And ideally, uh, the particle has kind of targeting properties to uh, deliver the RNA to organs as required for the intended therapeutic intervention. Um, here you see an overview on how we make these uh, particles in, in, in our company, or you see the overview over the overall manufacturing strategies. 
and have highlighted three key options to, to, to do so. One is the so-called lipoplex protocol, where we mix uh, liposomes uh, uh, with RNA, and we end up in structures with a certain uh, st uh, structure, which is uh, characterized by a certain degree of lamella order. We will come back to that. And this is being used uh, uh, by us, for example, for our cancer vaccines um, uh, and other products. Uh, in parallel, uh, we also work with the so-called LMP protocol. That's also the technique where we use the, 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 the PNI technology for, where you mix an, an ethanol solution with an aqueous phase of RNA by using microfluidic mixers, and you end up in so-called LMP nanoparticles, which I will discuss to further detail in the next slides. We also use uh, polymeric delivery systems, where again, we, we, we just uh, in simply spoken mix two phases, which in that case mostly are aqueous phases, and we end up in, in polymer nanoparticles. And for all systems, you see here some, some publications where we describe to more detail how we do it and for which purpose we, we do that. I would like to spend a minute on, on on lipoplexes and, and LMPs, um, as uh, these are two terms for rather similar systems, and I would uh, uh, share with you uh, uh, what we mean if we uh, talk about lipoplexes and, and LMPs, uh, and what are the similarities and differences. So if we talk about lipoplexes, we mean, as, as mentioned, that we use uh, 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 a protocol where we mix two aqueous phases, mostly uh, um, in aqueous phases where the, the lipids uh, consist of liposomes, so they form a, a lamellar bilayer-based structure, which is then uh, incubated with the RNA in a mixing device, and we end up in, in this um, uh, multi-lamellar organization uh, in comparison to the unilamellar organization is shown here. And this is meant to be more unilamellar and this more like uh, multilamellar. This can be done with relatively simple uh, 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 settings of, of, of the liposome. So here uh, I, uh, we, uh, I show you two typical li lipids we use for it. Dogma is a cationic lipid. DOPE is a helper lipid, which is known to the community as being favorable for, for uh, um, endosomal uptake and, and processing. In contrast, the LMPs are manufactured by using a lipid solution in ethanol as a starting phase, where you have a bit more complex lipid composition, mostly comprising cholesterol as, as one component, as well as uh, phospholipids, slightly different from those for the lipoplexes. Uh, for example, DSPC, which is uh, a fully saturated phospholipid, uh, which is more in the, in the gel phase at room temperature. And by doing so, you end up in, in, in lipid nanoparticles, uh, which have a different internal organization. And importantly, for manufacturing this uh, LMPs, um, you do need uh, mostly a stealthy moiety for, for particle engineering, also in order to uh, arrive at optimized uh, particle uh, properties of the injection. To highlight uh, the, the similarities and difference between the systems a bit further, I would like to introduce to you uh, the technique of small angle X-ray scattering, which we use regularly to characterize our products for various purposes. This is now uh, an example on a basic research study where we uh, um, investigated lipoplex model membranes comprising uh, RNA or, or, or just the, uh, the membranes of the lipids themselves. And we studied how the, the structure of resistance changes on introducing RNA, changing NP ratio, and things like that. And um, in, in simply spoken, uh, you can uh, analyze various aspects. Uh, in many cases, you have peaks, which are frag peaks, which allow you to, to determine uh, regular spacings. There may be also patterns which are not structured at all. And this is actually a pattern from a pure uh, liposome comprising the cationic lipid. 
And the absence of BRAC peak is indicative for the fact that uh, there is no correlation with the lamella because they have such a high electrostatic repulsion that uh, they, they don't know anymore that their other lamella are there or they are not there anyway. In the end, this allows you to, to get a better understanding of the composition and structure of your systems. In that case, we were able to construct the model how the RNA is uh, present inside uh, uh, repeating lipid bilayers, and we were uh, able as well to, to derive quantitative information of the composition, water content, and, and other fundamental parameters. Here, just uh, to reduce this a little bit, to our understanding, important uh, uh, features of, of the scattering patterns are this, this frag peak characteristics, where we can see a, a peak position, which gives us the information on the repeat distance, the despacing. The peak width gives you an information on, on, on the uh, correlation lengths into these stacks. Let's say how ordered are these stacks. Uh, this can be translated in the number of, of, of layers, repeating layers which are there, or in the, the type of order which is present. And also the area is important because this gives you an information on the amount of material present in, in, in that particular structural uh, organization. And this can be then uh, used also to analyze a, a real pharmaceutical products. I would like to come back to, to LMP engineering here using some, some cartoons taken from, from precision, uh, actually, how, uh, how, how particles are manufactured using the, the PNI technology by mixing that in, in this microfluidic device. And you see uh, you get this uh, particle with the RNA inserted and where this is what I would like to stress now. The stealth lipid is, 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 a, fun, is, a, is a component of fundamental importance because this allows us to, to make the particles in the desired size uh, range. And this also is required to define the, the properties of the injection. So uh, for this, uh, 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 stealthy moiety people mostly use uh, pegylated lipids, and there is this uh, so called PEG dilemma in, in, in the world, which uh, highlights uh, certain disadvantages, which are contrary to many of the advantages of, of having pegylated systems. So, as mentioned, PEG is required for particle engineering uh, uh, and, and other purposes. Uh, it's also useful as a stealthy moiety. However, PEG uh, may reduce the capacity of these particles for cellular uptake, and it may have also several uh, biological disadvantages, for example, those which are um, de uh, denominated as the so-called uh, ABC phenomenon, advanced blood clearance, because the, the PEG is recognized by antibodies, and therefore uh, the, the efficacy of, of a, a certain uh, drugs of which comprise pegylation is reduced because the, the, the immune system recognizes uh, these systems. And this is uh, highly undesirable. In addition to other effects like, like anaphylactic shocks, uh, which can occur in, in very rare cases. Therefore, there is uh, an interest in substituting PEG with, which is with a better tolerated uh, moiety, which however, has as well the, the, the same advantages as PEC. And here we came across uh, to, to poly, polypeptoids, basically uh, uh, from our contacts to the laboratory of Matthias Bartz, uh, who's now in the Leiden University. And polypeptoids are uh, natural polymers similar to polypeptides, where poly, poly, uh, the sarcosine is the, 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 uh, the building block which is an endogenous amino acid, which has very similar properties than the repeat unit of, uh, of PEC. And we decided to use that for, for uh, engineering and, and for tailoring uh, formulations. It allows you to do many um, more controlled things in, in, in terms of uh, uh, tailoring uh, varieties, chemical uh, chemical structures in comparison to, to PEC because the chemistry has some advantages uh, in, in that respect. And uh, when we started, uh, there were already many studies in the world by using uh, polysarcosine for, for manufacturing of other types of nanoparticles ranging from liposomes, 
polymer based nanoparticles where you can use of the, the, the advantage of polysacks in chemistry for, for, for doing all kinds of things. This is just an overview from some of the publications which came out from, from uh, Matthias's uh, lab. And this is what we use then for tailoring now uh, messenger RNA based uh, lipid nanoparticles. And we, what we did is we, we compared, first of all, the, the, the capacity for particle engineering using pegylated moieties and, and uh, polysaccharide moieties. Uh, here you have uh, data of poly, uh, particle size as a function of molar fraction of the PSAR for different PSAR chain lengths. There's a short chains and the other chains become longer. And in a nutshell, what you see is that uh, you can do a similar type of particle engineering uh, as with PEG, or with increasing PEG fractions, so the size goes down, also with polysarcosine. And you have additionally the, the, uh, the access to different chain lengths, which allows you to uh, um, introduce a further technological space for, for particle engineering. If you look at uh, uh, the internal structure from X-ray scattering, you see uh, also characteristic patterns, which are a little bit different to the lipoplexes we looked at some, some minutes ago. We uh, have a much broader peak, but still there is a peak, and this peak kind of decreases if you increase the, the, the fraction of the, of the crafted moiety. And this is the case for both polysarcosinylated and pegylated um, pet, uh, structures. And uh, this can be quantitatively analyzed and uh, certain structural elements, structural information can be derived from that. Uh, as a, at the first glance, you see that somehow uh, by introducing more of the crafted moiety, we lose this, this motif, which is indicated for the, for the order pattern. And now I, I, I would go a, a little bit to, to some, some, some fundamentals and uh, introduce some, some, some high school physics, maybe 10th grade, and introduce you some, some, some um, kind of analogs which allow you to understand why the patterns look like that, uh, where I uh, uh, share with you um, what people call a slit function, which is basically uh, the, the form factor of a scattering unit and the, um, the, the structure factor, which gives you the information on the repeating uh, moieties. Simply spoken, uh, maybe you remember if you shade light onto a slit, you get uh, a certain scattering profile, uh, which basically looks like a Gaussian. This is this, uh, this curve, and this is the scattering profile you, um, you, you obtain if you just uh, have um, a scattering from a, a, a very simple uh, uh, rod of a certain length, and you see there's no, no further uh, uh, structuring. If you have a double slit or three slits, you, you can get uh, scattering from the superposition of the scattering from this uniform scatterer, which always looks like that. And then the, 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 the repeating uh, patterns, they lead to a peak-like structure where the more uh, the peak units you, you, you aggregate, the narrower the peaks are. And physics and mathematics tells you that you have to multiply the, the, the uh, pattern resulting from the single scatterer with a pattern from repeat units and get then a scattering profile. And here you see uh, we have uh, what we have done is we have calculated uh, the, the expected scattering of a mixture of two and three repeat units multiplied by the pattern of a, of a single rod, which has the length of a lipid bilayer. And you can see qualitatively, you can represent the, the profile fairly well uh, uh, as measured experimentally. And this, in other words, tells you that uh, the, uh, the RNA inside the lipid nanoparticles uh, is um, organized to a low extent, consisting of maybe something like two or three repeat units, but not more. But there is a certain uh, internal organization. Otherwise, we would not see this peak. This can help you to, to, to uh, uh, compare quality of particles from different manufacturers and also evaluate uh, uh, the, the systems uh, in, in general. So coming now to, to biology. Going back maybe to something uh, more, more practical. 
This is uh, an example of a measurement where we investigated the effect of uh, efficacy in cell culture transfection, uh, uh, varying the, the PSAR fraction for different chain lengths, 11, 23, and 34, and 65, in comparison to, to PEC. And as mentioned before, um, if we increase the mole fraction of PEC, the, the transfection efficacy goes down because the, the, uh, the uh, PEC layer impedes cellular uptake. Interestingly, in, uh, the effect of polysarcosine is the contrary, so we get even an increase to a certain extent of transfection efficacy as a function of PSAR fraction, which is basically very good if you want to use high fraction of polysarcosine or the stealthy moiety for, for uh, particle engineering. Now, we see already one advantage of polysarcosine in comparison to PEC. Going to uh, in vivo data, here you see um, experiments using nanoparticles comprising luciferase coding RNA again, uh, which has been observed by uh, in, in, in vivo uh, imaging. And uh, in, in these experiments, we demonstrate that by, by selecting uh, the right polysarcosine type and molar fraction, you can kind of uh, modulate to a certain extent the, the targeting profile between the, the, the key organs, liver, lung, spleen, and uh, make particles which are either preferentially targeting uh, the, the spleen or, or, or the liver. And, and, and that manner uh, have, uh, uh, without uh, specifically binding ligands, already certain preference to, to, uh, to an organ uh, uh, as, as required. And uh, as well, you can uh, then uh, modulate for the, the selected polysarcosine moiety, the, the molar fraction, and you can optimize that towards, uh, towards uh, targeting a certain organ. In that case, we show you liver data which are optimized by this 5% polysarcosine uh, 23. This can be further improved by then fine tuning the, the lipid composition. Uh, here you see an example on, on um, substituting the, the, the DOTMA, which we use quite frequently as, as a benchmark because it's uh, available in, in large quantities by, by other lipids. Here you see this DILIN MC3 DMA, which is well known from the uh, alnylam uh, approved product. And uh, just by substituting the ionizer bit, we could show that the, um, the, the luciferase expression, as well as the, the EPO uh, excretion into circulation, uh, tremendously increases. And this is uh, a further lipid uh, from our internal development which uh, showed a uh, uh, similar, even slightly higher expression profile uh, according to the, to the EPO uh, levels. So we could show that uh, high uh, transfection efficacy can be obtained by using uh, polysarcosine-related LMPs with optimized ionizable lipids. Here, uh, this is uh, also addressing another key uh, issue. Uh, here we address the, the, the safety profile of, of polysarcosine in comparison to PEC. And in a nutshell, this data show you that um, uh, according to various uh, um, readouts, the, um, the, the tolerability of uh, polysarcosine particles is way better than those of LMPs. And uh, we could uh, arrive at a, a higher tolerability uh, in all essays tested here. Of course, it is uh, here what we see only a limited uh, selection of, 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 uh, of essays. Uh, this needs to be uh, extended, but uh, from everything we tested here, we could say that the polysarcosine matches or outperforms uh, the, the pack with respect to durability. With that, I think we have covered many important uh, requirements for, for an improved substitute for PEC. And uh, as a conclusion, I think I could show you that uh, you know, we can use polysarcosine lipids in a similar manner as pec related lipids for, for uh, engineering LMPs with respect to, to physical chemical characteristics, characteristics as well as for biological uh, activity. 
we could uh, explore many uh, important structural characteristics by using uh, extended characterization, including uh, small angle X-ray scattering, and could uh, highlight some coherencies uh, of the internal structures uh, and correlate them with activity. We obtained high transfection um, efficacy uh, by uh, by using novel lipids, and we could modulate uh, the uh, targeting, the organ targeting profile by selecting the right uh, lipid composition. And overall, we would think that uh, with this characteristics, uh, PSAR LMPs can be a very promising, a potent uh, 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 approach for tailoring next generation RNA therapeutics for all kinds of. Um, of clinical use. And with that, I would like to finish and thank uh, people who have contributed to this uh, to this work. First of all, Sava Nogueira, as I mentioned, this is part of her PhD thesis uh, and, and published uh, already. Peter Langut is her uh, PhD supervisor at the university and Lucas and, and Antje are a PhD student who contributed to further X-ray data in this uh, study. From uh, with Matthias Sparz, we developed this this polysuction technology based on his earlier studies uh, on, on other types of nanoparticles. Then Pierre provided us with, with the lipids with our ongoing cooperation, and many of our X-ray studies are being done in cooperation with the uh, EMBL outstation at uh, Daisy Hamburg, where we did the small angle measurements. And in the future, we will do a little bit more than that. Um, as we extended our cooperation. With that, uh, I would like to thank you very much for your attention and I'm happy to take questions. So I must thank everybody for submitting so many questions. If we haven't been able to answer it live, we will follow up um, and come back to you about the answers to your questions. So it just remains to me to thank our, our speaker, Heinrich Haas, once again. I uh, very much appreciate um, your taking time to present at this Tea Time webinar. Um, and uh, there will be another one in another month. So thank you very much for attending today. Um, and we will be announcing the details of the next one soon um, by email, uh, by LinkedIn and Twitter, of course. So uh, thanks, everyone. And we look forward to seeing you all again very soon. Thanks very much.